Hello traders and investors. Welcome to another video. I wanted to go over my top 15 picks for the current month. Now, they are not just for the month. These are the ones that I'm tracking for the year and next year. High value on a fundamental basis. And now I'm just looking to put them on or take them off over time. First, let's look at the S&P 500 and it continues to trend up. So one of my concerns, of course, is if the S&P changes direction, how will it affect my top 15 names? Obviously, I think it could hurt them, but what are you gonna do? You gotta buy something, and it's not gonna be the S&P. So I'm hedging by shorting call spreads on the S&P and buying stuff when it's attractive from my list. Let's start off with my top picks. There's two that I am very excited about because they are attractive on a fundamental basis, have future growth, and the charts look right. One of them is CSIQ. It is down deep below book value, and I definitely like the five-year outlook. This is CSIQ. That purple line that you see is just a, it's just a envelope based on the 100 day moving average and 25 to 30% below that. What is it? Yeah, 25%. It's just an indicator of roughly an estimate of 50% below the 200 day moving average. That's what it's going to mimic. Next stock, IQ. I have been loving the action in IQ. It's definitely benefiting from the stimulus news in China. This is the Netflix of China. Their numbers are good. They've been pulled back, and yet the stock is so beat up that the numbers are still good. Could be a 4 or $5 stock in the next year, but over the five-year future, it could be even bigger than that. It's beat up, and it's near tangible book. I have a yellow line. That's the tangible book value. I like to buy stocks when they're very close to their tangible book value. Now, here's another one that isn't beat up enough, but they are growing very well. This is Car Gurus. If I could get that in the $20 range, I would be more excited. This one is just not in a, in a place where I can buy it. It, it just, it's a good value, but I will get a better return if I can get it on sale. Stone in Brazil. This one I am buying. I am long this one. Uh, I, th I believe I am in in calls as well. Credit funded calls. It's like a risk reversal. Very bullish on stone. It's a growth stock. It's like a payment processor in Brazil. And it's cheap. So that one I am interested in. Mobily, I do not have a position yet. I don't know why I do not, but this one is a good grower. Intel owns a, a big majority of it. It meets my technical parameters and the forward earnings for next year are attractive. So I am looking to put on a position on Mobley. It could go lower, which would just make it more attractive, but Mobley definitely has that five year growth profile. They are a Tesla alternative. Essentially, they help other other businesses with uh, automated self-driving. So they will get revenue by offering that to the automakers. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say that, for that one. This one's a risky one. It, it's already running away. I traded in. I traded out. This is a lending broker in China, but the numbers are fantastic. Something like 18% earnings yield. I would love to see this one pull back so I can trade it again. But uh, risky and it's small, but definitely worth keeping an eye on. It would also be a good indicator of just how finance is in China. Intel, my number seven pick. I do think it, it's tradable. It's worth trading. I'm just not in love with the business. I think they will be capital intensive. They're talking about breaking themselves up. But I think it's worth a trade. It's, it's at, uh, it's really close to a tangible book value. They own a big chunk of Mobley or Mobileye. So there's, 
There's a lot of good things I can go. I've traded it before. This thing has doubled from 20, 25 to 50. Could it do it again? Could it do half of that? I definitely think it's tradable, just probably not one of the best on my list. Another one, Geely. Geely, uh, one, one of the major car EV makers in China. It's benefited from stimulus. Hopefully it comes down. Still very cheap if it doesn't. Was very close to tangible book, but now it's very much above it. I think it has a bright future. Uh, could be a, could be much more valuable in the future, but you know, there's, there's definitely risk in this one with a possible Trump win, tariffs, who knows. I think there would be another shot to get in there. I would love to see it closer to a dollar. It's a dollar 91 right now. Next one on my list is Upwork. Upwork just has that growth profile. Maybe if it dips again, I should have traded it. I missed it. Maybe, maybe below 10. Hopefully below 10 would be worth another shot. But this is a double digit grower. They offer freelancers. It's, it's a, they offer a platform for freelancers and companies or, or people to hire each other. So that's Upwork. Lee, another EV maker, hasn't run up as much as Geely, but uh, Lee Auto, they have tons. These Both of these companies have plenty of cash. They have plenty of growth, and they were very beat up. The market doesn't appreciate them. BYD is, is more expensive, more well-known, but these are also in the space. I don't know who will take the most market share, but the companies are attractive on a valuation standpoint, and they have growth. Snap, Snapchat. I liked it when they collapsed at below nine. I still like it going forward, but I think they will smack it again. So maybe if it gets at nine or lower, will be worth a trade for me. I've been selling puts and buying straight up shares. I haven't been that bullish on it, but hey, this could be a could be a fifty dollar stock over the next five years. So definitely worth watching. Pags. Pagos Seguros, uh, I think this is Latin American, same thing, payment processor. I am buying this now. I am also, uh, just like Stone, using leverage, buying calls, paying for them with credit spreads. Um, but Pags could go back to the moving average, could go higher. Definitely beat up. Bright future ahead of it. Baidu. Baidu, I am also in using leverage. I have long calls, paying for them with credit spreads. And I believe I have some shares as well. It's below 100, 100 being the tangible book value. Uh, not as much growth as some of the other names, but you know, Baidu is like the Google of China. They're also in, in AI. They're also in self-driving. So I could, I could see this being $150 stock somewhere in the future. It, their back is against the wall as far as the book value. So I think the risk reward is there. That's why it's on my list. 14. This is number 14 Celsius. Uh, it's a little expensive, but it's, it makes sense from a peg ratio standpoint. They're growing at 25 30 percent even if you say 20 20 to 25 percent their pe for uh, this year and next year roughly about 30 35 so it does make sense it's down over 70 percent from the highs used to be a hundred dollar stock it's in the 30s it's it's down over 50 percent that's when i start salivating for it celsius i'm trading it uh, what do I have? Short put spread, long call spread on this one. Uh, I think it could it could rebound half of the move maybe, but this is one I'll be trading um, over the next one to two years. Hopefully, if there is a recession, they they take it down some more. But uh, this is a over a twenty percent grower over the next five to ten years. That's Celsius, and then lastly on my list, uh, my top fifteen stocks. This is Momo. Momo, another deep value stock. 
Uh, this is the social media and dating apps in China. Book value is eleven dollars forty-seven cents. It's trading at six. It traded f uh, as low as five. High earnings yield, and they do pay a dividend. It's a special dividend. It's not a guaranteed dividend, but they've been paying um, it's almost ten percent a year. I don't have the exact numbers, but Momo is my number fifteen. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. I would appreciate any feedback. Cheers.